Hi guys, it's Nicola. Today we're going to talk about chemistry. Now, you've probably been back in school a few weeks at this stage and things are starting to really settle in and it's been probably a tough start to the year already, but it does get better. Now, um, hopefully you're seeing that chemistry is one of the ones you put the graft in, it'll pay off for you, but it just takes a little bit of hard work, particularly at the start of the year to really settle in. Now, um, the benefits of studying chemistry are, it's one of these subjects that it interlinks with a few others. So there is some nice crossover with biology and physics. And if you're to do chemistry in college, there's very little difference between physics and chemistry, depending on how high up you go. So it is a really nice one to study. And to be honest, another benefit is you put the graft in and it's going to pay off. It's not one of these subjects where it's a bit iffy and you're not too sure that if you put in hours and hours of work that it's going nowhere. If you genuinely put the work in, it's going to pay off. Now, where do we put that work? Um, you need to focus on your definitions now. I'm a broken record. Everybody who knows me knows that I say this 10 times in a week. And it's true because anyone who comes to me and is like, oh, I'm finding chemistry quite difficult. My first piece of advice is you need to learn your definitions. There's no way around it. There's no rephrasing involved. You just have to sit and learn them. Now, there's cheats and ways around that. I use a little, it's like a little flashcard book that I got in just a cheap shop. And it's like flashcards that are ring bound together. And I write the keyword on one side and the definition on the back. And I torture some poor person to ask me them. And I do one every single day until they're done. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it's not. It's 10 minutes every single day. And within a few weeks, you'll notice a massive improvement in your definitions. Now, the structure of the exam is quite... Um, it's not that it's difficult. It's just you just need to be careful and you need to plan in advance what you are going to answer. Because I don't want you on the day to sit down in front of the exam paper and you haven't a clue what you're, what you're staring at and you're just not too sure what you're going to answer. That's not going to be you. So there's two sections to the paper. It's 400 marks and you have three hours to get, to get those 400 marks, which is eight questions. Now, section A is the experiments and there's three questions in section A and you have to answer a minimum of two of those three. So you can answer all three if you wish, which then would mean that you have five questions to answer in section B instead of six, but it's quite rare that someone would do that. Then in section B, there are, it's question four to 11, and you can answer any of them that you want. And built into question four, 10 and 11, there is additional choice within those questions. So it is a really, really nice paper, but you just, I would plan it carefully. And actually now is the time to do it this early. So if you're just a kind of like, I know what my favorite topics are, plan your exam paper around that play to your strengths and there's a couple of topics that I would say make sure you cover those as well and know those inside and out because they're going to be the ones that save you on the day namely organic chemistry um, common myths about the subject is a lot of people come to me and say oh I'm not too sure I can take chemistry it seems like I've heard it's quite hard it's not genuinely it's not now, I'm not saying that as a chemistry teacher who knows the paper inside and out. I'm saying it as someone who has had many students struggle with chemistry in fifth year. And I'll level with you. Fifth year is hard. Fifth year is hard because you are laying the groundwork for the chemistry paper. You're doing all of the hard, nitty gritty linking stuff in fifth year. And you're doing all of the prep work in fifth year. That's hard, particularly when you haven't done it before. But when you get to sixth year, you're going to see that it happens in the first three months every year. I get this where people are like, oh, my God, I can actually do chemistry. I'm quite good at it. It's like, yeah, you are <laughs> because you're building on what you've done in fifth year. Now, if fifth year was a little bit shaky, the start of sixth year is when you need to nail fifth year again and then use it to help you with sixth year. So going over bonding, intermolecular interactions um electronegativity in particular those kinds of topics they feed directly into a couple of other things like organic chemistry and you actually get to see them in action and what impact they have so it's not like you're starting organic chemistry in sixth year where most of you will start it in september 
and you have never seen intermolecular interactions before, it would be a really good idea to kind of go back over that now so that when you get to the organic synthesis part of organic chemistry, that you're like, oh, that has a different boiling point because of this. It has a different intermolecular interaction, etc. And I just find that, yes, fifth year is hard. I say it to every single fourth year student that you're going to find fifth year a little bit tricky, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. In sixth year, you are going to fly if you've put the effort in in fifth year. Sixth year, I've had so many of my H1s come to me at Easter time being like, I actually enjoyed chemistry this year and I hadn't a clue what was happening last year because they were doing the hard stuff last year and this year they were using what they had learned before and it just made it so much more relevant to them and they could actually see where it was going so they enjoyed it much more. Um, to get organized for chemistry now it depends on whether or not you are a fifth or a sixth year student and the first part of it is going to be relevant to both of you um, to get organized for chemistry you have to have somewhere for your definitions to go so that does not mean in your homework copy you're just writing them out as you go along absolutely not because you're never going to be able to find them I want them in a separate dedicated if you're using flashcards great they're a really handy easy way to kind of dip in and out of them or if you have a hardback notebook that's another way of doing it's actually how I did it in my leave insert and just have your definitions written out and go down through them one at a time um another thing is a lot of people find the experiments in particular quite difficult to get their head around there's not that many of them but and they do group together so big massive group of them is the titrations the difficult thing is it's spread across three different topics so it's quite hard to kind of group them together if i was studying uh, titrations i would start with the acid base ones then move on to the redox titrations and leave the water ones to last because they're a little bit trickier they're just the color changes involved and in what's happening is a little bit trickier not that it's hard it's not it's just there's a little bit more going on with them that's different to the ones that you would have previously done then keep on top of it. Now, this it's going to sound, you're just going to roll your eyes at me. I know you are, because <laughs> I get it every year, where I give a piece of advice like this and people just go, oh yeah, of course that will happen. And then two weeks from now, I'm going to be saying I told you so. You have to stay on top of it. Now, there's going to be a lot going on at the start of the year. You're probably right back in the swing of things where or you're studying subjects that you haven't done before, or they're a little bit trickier, or the pace is moving quite quickly. Chemistry is something that you can't afford to fall behind on because of how everything links together. If you are finding bonding quite difficult, that's then going to set you on a bit of a shaky path coming into organic chemistry. So you have to nail that bit first. Now, how do we do that? You need to go back over your notes, highlight the relevant bits, practice drawing the structures, the dot and cross structures, do some past paper exam questions. As far as I'm concerned, that's the best way to study for chemistry. You have to do the exam questions because it's no use sitting in a room with a teacher and they're telling you all this fantastic information about chemistry. But if you haven't done the exam papers and you haven't seen the style of answers required, what your teacher has given you is correct but you might not be able to put it on paper on the day. So you have to do the exam papers as well. Now, get yourself organized. When you are going through the topic in class, spend 10 minutes when you get home going back over what you did in class. Did you get all of the information? Was there anything that you found a little bit tricky? Make note of anything that you found a little bit, oh, you're not too sure about it. Write it down, have a look online, see is there anything that you can find on it? Check your textbook, check your notes. If you can't find it, then at the start of the next class, go to your teacher and ask. We may be quite busy at the time, but we will make time for you to go through anything or any difficulties that you have. You can't sit on it though. Now, I've had it before where someone has just something that's quite small and they didn't ask. And then suddenly it's turned into this big thing where they're like, they've convinced themselves that they can't do chemistry. Whereas if they'd sat down with me for five minutes, would have been fine because it was only something very, very small. Now, to get the benefit out of chemistry, you have to be organized like that. Now, that's going to be a little bit different to other subjects. You need to stay on top of it. Make sure your homework is done on time. I know I'm a teacher when I say that, <laughs> but it just it really does help you. Now, if you're if you find that you're not getting a lot of homework, lucky you, it would be a very good idea to get ahead of the game. 
do the exam papers, look at the style of questioning. Where does this particular question come up? How many marks is it typically on offer for? And just kind of look at the mark scheme after you've answered the question. Don't look at the mark scheme beforehand because that's counterproductive. Do the question, see how well you scored, compare it to the mark scheme. How many marks would you have gotten? Is your answer super long, which we don't want? We don't want an essay for something that's three marks because that's a waste of time. And then if you find that you got three marks out of nine, where did those six marks go? Have a go at it again, cover over the mark scheme and then try it again. And to do this, I would have a separate copy for the exam questions because a lot of them are repeatable. I actually have, because I've done it out for all of the exam paper topics and whenever I get, I give my sixth years a lot of homework throughout the year because it helps them. And whenever I give them a bunch of exam papers to do, as soon as I give it, they're like, oh my God, that's so much work. I'm like, yeah, but you've got a month to do it. And I've done it as well. So I pull out, it's an A4, A pad that has little tabs or dividers in it. And I split them out by topic. So if I'm studying or doing the rates of reaction questions, they're all in one divider and I go year by year. Then if I'm doing equilibrium, that's in the next tab. I don't actually do it year by year as a whole because at the start of the year you might not have covered equilibrium you might not have done ph and then you're going to have gaps everywhere and i just i don't like that i actually find that that's quite it makes me think that like oh my god i still have so much to do rather than focusing on you've done a mountain of work from fifth year already more than you probably realize and you can probably answer more questions than you think you can before you get to sixth year and it just helps to kind of keep all of the relevant topics together so that next year or next April when I'm going back and revising if I only wanted to revise rates of reaction I'm not then flicking through oh in 2018 I answered it here and then go back in 2016 I've answered it here it's all in one handy little tab in my A4 pad or if you wanted to use separate ones I wouldn't necessarily advocate different A4 pads for different topics because then you're going to have a mountain of them and um, just if you're using a folder, make use of tabs and poly pockets or those plastic pockets to help separate your work. Now, try and keep on top of your notes as well. If your teacher is someone who gives you lots of handouts and stuff, make sure you file them when you get them. Because two weeks from now, you're gonna be like, oh, I thought she gave me a lovely handout on organic synthesis that give, goes through all of the steps. Now, where did I put that? And you find it at the bottom of your bag covered in banana or something else. No, nobody wants that. And just try and be organized. If you are organized, it's not going to be as stressful as if you are not organized. Trust me on this, I see it the whole time. Have nice highlighters, use different highlighters for different things. If I was going through a question and I'm like, right, I'm gonna highlight my definition in orange. Then I move down and I'm going through my notes and I might use yellow, I actually love yellow highlighter, <laughs> for key information that I want to highlight. I don't use the same color for both so that next time when I'm flicking through my notes, I can go, oh, there's a definition, I need to know that. Then I'll find key information for particular exam questions. Now, that's, they're basically my top tips. <laughs> now, please don't think that chemistry is the hardest subject on the Leaving Cert. It's not. I promise you it isn't. It just does take a lot of preparatory work earlier in the year to get on top of it. As far as I'm concerned, you can't get to February having done nothing for fifth year in the first half of sixth year and go, oh, I'm definitely going to do well in chemistry. Unless you have a photographic memory, I would be highly skeptical. So if you put lay the groundwork now, so even tonight after you hear this or tomorrow, you start with one definition at a time you will see that by Christmas time, your marks are going to start creeping up and up. Same for the exam questions. It's another way to, to build on your marks. It's not like the mock is going to be the first exam question that you see because that doesn't make any sense and you haven't a clue what the exam paper looks like. Build on the exam papers that have already been available, particularly the most recent ones. We had an examiner change in 2019 and the style of questioning and the cross-linking involved is very different to the older exam papers. 2019, 2020 and 2021, you have to do those inside and out. Now, when I say there's cross-linking as well, a lot of people think that, oh sure, I don't really like acids and bases, sure I can skip that. No, 
I do not advocate skipping topics at all. As far as I'm concerned, the only topic that you can really get away without is the option. But I wouldn't because it's so lovely. It's a really nice one. And just build on it from now. Have a study plan from September that this week I'm going to go back and I'm going to revise bonding from last year. Next week I'm going to go back and I'm going to do electronegativity. Then I'm going to do radioactivity. And have that, that needs to run concurrently with what you are currently studying. And that will take a little bit of settling. That's going to be like, oh my God, I have so much to do. You don't. You just need to break it up into bite-sized pieces now. And focus on, if you're doing organic chemistry, which a lot of you will be doing in September, then intermolecular interactions is the first thing I want you to revise from fifth year because that's really going to help you in organic chemistry. And there's a couple of topics like that where you're like, oh, I'm not sure, why would I care about that? I'm not answering question five on the paper. It's going to come back up in question six, question eight, question 10, question 11. So it looks quite innocuous, but it really isn't. Make sure you focus on bonding and intermolecular interactions and get those solid to give you a good basis for a couple of topics that you're going to do in sixth year. Right, and that's basically my best piece of advice. So best of luck and hopefully you'll take on maybe two of my tips and see how you get on and hopefully it will be of benefit to you.